what makes a motorcycle fast? Now, there are a lot of factors that attribute to a motorcycle's speed, but uh, one of those factors which is really important is aerodynamics. And uh, when it comes to aerodynamics, the debate is out there between fared and not fared motorcycles. So today we're gonna talk about the advantages and disadvantages of having a fairing on your motorcycle. Now, what is a fairing? A fairing is essentially like a cover or a shell or imagine panels essentially that cover the front and the sides of the motorcycle. Uh, the main purpose being to fend off air and to help the motorcycle cut through the air, which makes it a lot more aerodynamic. But over the time, we've learned to do multiple other things with fairings and uh, today we're gonna discuss some of those things that a fairing is useful for apart from just aerodynamics. Now, when it comes to aerodynamics, one of the main benefits that you get from it is better performance. The fact that you can cut the air better means that your engine has to use less of its power to cut the air since your motorcycle does it for it and that way your motorcycle can focus on putting down more power to the rear wheel and propelling you forward a lot more easier. Now, how do manufacturers essentially design aerodynamics with fairings? Now, a lot of manufacturers will put in the money and the R&D and the time and wind tunnel test these motorcycles to make them more aerodynamic. Uh, the bike you see on my t-shirt over here, the, the Apache RR310, has a aerodynamic coefficient, a drag coefficient of 0.26, which makes it quite efficient. Now, that's because the RR310 is wind tunnel tested. Now, not a lot of manufacturers do that. A lot of manufacturers design fairings purely down to aesthetics and less down to functionality. How do you know which these man which of these manufacturers are? Well, I think the ones that wind tunnel tested won't miss the opportunity to tell you that they have. Uh, a lot of them will market it themselves. Whereas the ones that don't market it are usually the ones that haven't really done it. Another advantage of a better fairing is better fuel efficiency. Remember that part I said earlier where the engine has to use less energy because the fairing is cutting the wind better? Well, the same applies to fuel efficiency. When you're cruising and you're just going along, the fact that your motorcycle cuts through the air so much better means that you can save a lot more fuel, so better fuel efficiency. Another benefit is rider comfort. You will be a lot more comfortable on a fared motorcycle that's been designed for touring as compared to a naked motorcycle. Primarily because your upper body and your torso won't have to fight the wind as much when you're riding. When you're riding and you have both your hands on the handlebar, you don't want to exactly be using your upper body strength to fight and hold yourself on for dear life, right? Uh, windscreen generally does that in the front, the fairing around the side also diffuses the wind from uh, away from your legs. So that makes things a lot easier and that way you can be a lot more comfortable on a motorcycle. Now when I say fared motorcycles, you might be thinking the extreme end of the spectrum which is your uh, track, track tools, you know, uh, thoroughbreds where you're sitting a bit more leaned forward. And that generally contributes to the discomfort, uh, it's not so much of the wind. But if you look at a bit more sport touring friendly motorcycles or even ADVs for that matter, um, you find a lot more comfort in there, mainly down to how, how well they deflect the wind. Uh, even a lot of cruisers for that matter. So yeah, those are some of the reasons that make an, a fared motorcycle a lot better. Now a fairing can also be used in other ways apart from just cutting the wind. You can also use it to redirect the wind a lot of times to your own benefit. So if you must have seen winglets on motorcycles, that's a more exaggerated use of the wind. Um, they essentially at higher speeds, and I'm talking about extreme triple digit speeds when there's enough wind hitting the motorcycle, they can use that amount of wind to essentially channel it and use it like a spoiler to push the bike further down, which gives you better traction, better downforce, better stability. And these things are quite important, especially when you're going to be reaching the upper echelons of what a motorcycle can do, the kind of speeds that they can do. Now, another thing you can do is you can redirect the vents and the aerodynamics on the motorcycle to sort of like vent hot air out of the engine bay, keeping the engine a lot more cooler. Uh, a lot of times they will also de design fairings in such a way that they allow the motorcycle's intake to breathe a lot better. So a cooler or smoother running engine means you've got more performance available. It's much easier. A lot of times motorcycle manufacturers will include little tidbits around the brakes so they can cool the brakes a lot better and redirect wind around the brakes. So that way you have cooler calipers and cooler brake pads and cooler discs so lesser brake fade on the track. And these are some of the ways that motorcycle manufacturers design these fairings not just to use, to cut the wind but also to use the wind to their most, to as much efficiency as they possibly can. Here's a point you may or may not agree with, depending on your taste and aesthetics, but a lot of people like fared motorcycles mainly because of how cool they look. And uh, now the coolness is the double-edged sword because you have these plastic panels and in some cases you've got carbon fiber panels and whatnot and 
as beautiful and well molded and, and just as sexy as they look, they can be very expensive when you drop them. Now, even on cheaper motorcycles, a fairing can cost you a bomb because the fairings are generally designed as one piece. So if you crack the fairing, you damage it, you scratch it, and I'm talking about deep scars, yeah, you're gonna have to replace the entire fairing. So it's like a plastic panel about ye big. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be a costly affair. And the higher the motorcycle costs, the more expensive. Like if you're talking about middleweights and sports bikes, yeah, you can easily imagine spending nothing short of a lakh to get the fairing replaced. Another disadvantage of having a fairing is reduced maneuverability. Now, when you have a naked motorcycle, you have a lot more steering radius available to you, whereas with the fairing, now that steering radius is limited because your forks can only turn so much, as much as the fairing can accommodate. So that means you have shorter turning radius and which means you may have to take more three-pointed turns or lean the bike further if you're comfortable with doing so and take sharper U-turns, which can be a bit annoying if you're living in the city. And uh, that's one of the disadvantages. Now, another thing about fairings is that because they're designed in such a way to cut down as much wind resistance and um, make the bike a lot more efficient, they tend to reduce the ground clearance a lot because the fairing tends to hang low and go under the bike too. That's what completes the entire package of a fairing because there's a lot of wind passing from under your motorcycle and too much wind can create lift and you don't want lift to be generated under you because then the next thing you know, your bike, your front wheels start lifting and now it's light and it feels unstable and you don't want that. So in order to make sure that the motorcycle stays pressed against the ground, it's not only the top half of the bike, but also the bottom half of the bike that contributes to that stability. And fairings, are, uh, the ground clearance on a fared motorcycle generally tends to be on the lower side, which can be quite annoying in a country like India where speed breakers tend to be unreasonably tall. And when that happens, imagine having to take a motorcycle sideways because you're scared of scraping the bottom. And uh, that can just be very tedious to live with in our country because that seems to be quite a common case. So yeah, these are some of the disadvantages that you have with a fairing and without a fairing. Do let us know in the comment section below which ones you prefer. I personally really like naked motorcycles because I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but uh, on the contrary, you'd imagine that fared motorcycles are a lot harder to design. The truth is that as hard as they are to design, naked motorcycles are quite tedious to design too. You would imagine that just stripping off the fairing means that naked motorcycles are very easy to design. No, because you're stripping off the fairing, you have to think about where you're gonna tuck in all that wiring, how you're gonna design the motorcycle, how you're gonna defeat whatever little wind resistance you possibly can while keeping the motorcycle naked. And remember, fairings don't add that much weight. So when you remove the fairing of a motorcycle, these days you're not losing all that much weight. So keep that in mind. So with all the facts that I've brought to you, do let us know in the comment section below if you prefer a fared motorcycle or a naked motorcycle. And if you prefer a fared motorcycle, why? And if you do ride a fared motorcycle, let us know in the comment section below what that fared motorcycle is and if you've had any issues with it. So stick around at the Top Care India YouTube channel for further search updates. This is Gavin Rodriguez signing off with another episode of TG Explains.